something to pick and learn over here. He says, as the eagles tear it up her nest, I'll read it again, fluttered over her young, spread it abroad her wings, take it them, bear it them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He's trying to explain something to you. I like the part he said, where he said, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. I like that part. Why? Because what he explained in verse 11, he's, he's trying to explain exactly how the Lord led the children of Israel. So, in other words, if you take a look at how the ego, all right, related with the baby ego, you will know exactly how the Lord leads us. If you take a look at exactly how the, the, the mother ego relates with the baby ego, you know exactly how the Lord leads us. And then when there are certain times in your life that look like this, if you know this scripture, you know, oh, maybe this is what is going on. Let me explain. He said, as the eagle stared up her nest. Now, what's that? In the scripture, the word stare up there, let me not bore you with Greek and Hebrew and all that, but let me just, the word stare up there, um, if you understand the process, all right, I'm, I'm dealing with this um, topic of the ego, I'm dealing more with the process. There are other sides to this. I could talk about how the ego is strong, so we are strong and all that, but today I'm, I'm dealing more with process, all right? So you look at your life and your walk with God and you understand certain processes. I think, I think that, um, in our walk with God as Christians, there are some things that we should um, understand. Because if we don't understand those things, we will not have answers to many things that happen around us. I think that trusting God is one of the biggest thing any Christian should learn. As an eagle stare it up, I, I, I mentioned, I said, trusting God should be one of the biggest things in the life of any Christian. Knowing God and trusting Him. And I, mentioned, I talked about this a lot during the Bible seminar. So let's look at something very, very important. Um, the eagle staring up her nest. So now let's look at how the eagle does this. Usually when the eagle has an eaglet, right, it carries, or carries the eaglet. In the beginning, the eagle goes to hunt for rabbits, gives it to the eaglet. Hunts for something, gives it to the eaglet. Because the eaglet is ground growing, growing. Hunts for something, gives it the eaglet. Goes for something, gives the eaglet. Remember in verse 12 it says, so the Lord alone did lead him. You can add on dead. So the Lord alone did lead him on. I'm just kidding. Just lead him, all right? After a while, as the custom of the eagle is, now remember what he's telling you exactly here, that this is how God operates. He said all of a sudden, he stares up the nest. He 
if we were watching this on geographic channel, like, hey, hey, you kill him. You don't want me to stir up the nest, to scatter the nest. You scatter the nest, I am my corporate is, and the eaglet will begin to fall. What's happening? Imagine, imagine the, e the eaglet is, is wondering, is this my mother? Are you here of going home? The eaglet is wondering, is this my mother? <laughs> is this my mother? Then this person begins to fall. Is this my mother? Is this my mother that loves me? Is my mother who has been bringing me rabbit meat? You know why? You know why that, eaglet is, uh, that eagle is doing that to the eaglets? Because the eagle knows her potential. So if I keep you here, you will not grow. So the Lord alone did lead him. That means God sometimes scatters the nest. God also scatters the nest. You know, sometimes we run away from challenges, but those are the only things that make us grow. So when the eaglet is coming down, wondering, does my mother really love me? But then he adds something there. Verse 11. He said, as an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, you see, this is the part that a lot of people don't realize. That at the time the eagle has let the eaglet down and looks like everything is going to the negative side, what happens is that while the eaglet is falling, the eagle is around. The eagle is around. So those challenges... Those situations that are going on at the time, the eagle is around. When you look at um, this verse, he says, so the Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with him. When you look at it, I want you to see Micah chapter 7, book of Micah. Verse 14. He said, feed thy people with thy rod. The flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Camel, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. He said, feed thy people with thy rod. I'll explain that in a bit. The flock of thy heritage. So feed them with the rod. I'll explain that I'm coming there. Because there's a similarity between what the eagle is doing and what the shepherd is doing. I explained to you, okay, it was not here. I explained in, in one service like that, I explained this. I said, when you see, all right, the shepherd with the sheep. In the, in, the, in the morning when they are going out, right, the shepherd is in front of them because the shepherd can see everything, the sheep can see everything. So everybody can see. So if there are wolves coming, the shepherd is going to 
support. But then in the evening, in the night, when the sheep are most afraid and nobody's sure, what calms down the anxiety of the sheep is that the shepherd does not stand behind them. He stands in the midst of them. And that's why the psalmist said, Here though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. So he's in the midst of them when it is night. And so you see the psalmist saying, He leadeth me beside the still waters. So when everything was fine, it was in the third person. He, 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 he. But when things got dark, he says, for you are with me. At that point, he's no longer saying he. Now it is you. It is you. Go back to that verse again, Deuteronomy. He says, as the eagle. You know, I can tell you many stories. There were times in my, in my life that God scattered a nest. Because, in fact, when you look at the shepherd, one of the things the shepherd does is his rod, right? What he does with a, with a rod is this. Because there's a rod and a staff. And those, those are, are, are two different things. And that's what I was talking about, Micah chapter 7, that feed the people with that rod. Now, what the, sheep, uh, what the shepherd does is when he sees the sheep going near maybe a ditch, right? He throws the rod. Sometimes it hits the sheep. Sometimes it scares the sheep away from the place so it doesn't fall into the ditch. Now, think about it if you're a sheep and you didn't see the ditch, but your shepherd saw the ditch, you see that the shepherd does not like me. That's why I say, trust in God. It's one of the most important things that any Christian will learn to do in his life. You wanted to apply for a particular school. You prayed, 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 prayed. You were not admitted. You are sad. So God did not listen to your prayer. You know, fundamentally, what you don't have is you don't trust God. There was a lady that sent me a testimony. Maybe I should read her testimony. If I asked anybody, are you ready for the eagle to stare at the nest? Oh, no. But I want to ask you a question. As a mother, which will frustrate you the more? I want to ask you a question. Maybe as a mother or father, which will frustrate you the more? That your child cannot fend for herself or himself. Or that your child is crying that he or she has not eaten. Let me read the testimony. Greetings, Pastor. Listen, thank you for the opportunity, sir. 
This is a continuation of the issue I shared with you earlier on. So my apologies for sending this late, Pastor. So please, I believe I ended up telling you how I got that she, she wanted to have, she wanted to work somewhere. And in her, spirit, in her heart, she wanted to work at Tolo Oil, all right? But the deadline was due, and from the prophecy you gave during the second ladies all night, I decided to submit my documents regardless of the circumstance. On that Monday morning, I went to Tulo Oil before I left home. I prayed and Holy Spirit gave me some instructions. He asked me to pray when I get to the building and pray after because they may prevent me from seeing the HR manager. But I should insist and if they still disagree, I should just leave my documents and speak in tongues at the forecourt of the building. Say I didn't listen. I got there, they didn't allow me to see the manager. I submitted documents to the security who said I would be called by the HR office, so I left. I was so disappointed because I kept telling myself, it has already happened, no need to do anything extra. That week I was so filled with doubt and fear and what ifs, and my mother was really not helping either because, of course, because she wanted me to go to Petroleum Commission since she knew some people there. But I wasn't happy about it because I was in a situation with God. She said if Tolo doesn't call by Friday, she would have, she would have the NSS office change my posting to petroleum. Said that week I was distressed. You can imagine what's distressing somebody. <laughs> petroleum commission is distressing somebody. Someone has been sent to <laughs> Savle Lugu Savle. But, I mean, we'll be having a problem. <laughs> I kept listening to messages. I like the fact that she knows what she wants. I kept listening to messages, but my heart was full of worry. I hardly used Telegram, but that week, I don't know how I ended up there. <laughs> I came across a message titled Faith on my saved messages on Telegram. And on that message... The man of God, Pastor Chris, said something very thought-provoking. He gave an example of a brethren applying for a job, praying and doing all that he has to do. And upon arriving at this company, everything goes south. Then he starts to doubt God. It means he never had faith in God to begin with. Sir, that really hit home. And it had me questioning myself. That whole week, Tulo didn't call and my posting was changed to petroleum, like my mother mentioned. I was so disappointed that I stopped praying because I thought my mother had things her way, so I gave up. So on one of the episodes of Race to Fight, you asked if there was a price for our loyalty to God, and it had me thinking, am I upset with God because things didn't go according to my plan? What if that wasn't God's plan? You also mentioned that we need to get to a point of understanding that whatever God does is good. Even if it is not our preference. Just last week, Monday, we received a call from Petroleum Commission and she said she has submitted two documents, mine and another lady's. Her boss picked the lady's documents, thus the place was full. This time I said I wasn't going to agree. So I listened to raise the fight from the first episode to the penultimate one. I prayed, spoke in tongues, and told my mother to just wait. The lady called later that evening to say that the lady whose documents were picked had been moved to national security. See how they move somebody's child like that. In this life, pray, oh, they don't move you to, <laughs> to Navy. <laughs> My documents were signed that day so I could begin work on 1st November. 
Pastor, I'm so grateful to you for teaching me how to fight. Also, how your sermons always align with situations I find myself in. I remember I once told you of my mental disorder diagnosis. You said I should keep coming to church. I took that advice, and it's always a different experience with God every Sunday. I now understand that my love for God must exceed my needs, and he knows what is best for me. He has my best interests at heart. I've also learned that the Holy Spirit is my helper. Therefore, I must always follow instructions and not get carried away in the moment. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I love you dearly. As the eagle stared up her nest. Can you sometimes stir it up? Everyone is going up at the other Stare it up. Sometimes with trouble. Sometimes with something you were not expecting. Sometimes for some reason everyone is speaking evil of you. For some reason, everything is just not going the way you want it to go. You know what? I asked the question. Would you prefer the eagle? Looking at, and I always ask this, I said, imagine you had a kid, you had a child, and you were taking the child to school, and the child is crying. You say, okay, let's not take her to school because she's crying. What are you going to do to that child? You know, sometimes some, some mothers, if some mothers were given the, the task to maybe bat their kids, like the one, the one they gave birth to, right? If they're given the task to, you know, bat them and maybe... You know the way the, the, grand, the, the grandmothers massage the baby? They will bend the child's leg like this. <laughs> bend the child. You, the mother, hey, please give my child. If the mother was supposed to do that, especially if she's having the child for the very first time, she will never do it. Right? Also, when you see the child picking something on the floor, say, hey, no, 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 no. But you know that's how the child builds immunity. But you're looking at your child, how you, how you went through a lot before this child came out. Then the mother is just using hot water, just pressing the head, saying, hey, please give my thing. <laughs> As the eagle stared up the nest, you know, in your work with God, there will definitely be such moments. You stare everything. You stare the nest. And when he stares the nest, he will still be fluttering over the young. So you know what happens to the eaglet? As it happens like that, the first time, the eaglet says, Mommy, 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 mommy. If you're watching it, you say, Ah, what a wicked mother. Then the eagle will say, Spread her wings and take at them and bury them on the wings. You'll do it for the first time. Why? Because the eagle is looking at the eaglet, say, your you have potential. Your potential is not to be in the nest and be eating rabbit I bring you. You have what it takes to be like me. I see you and you are like me. But the eaglet is thinking, I just came. I just came. Please. But the, the eagle is looking at the eaglet and saying, no, I see you. You are me. You are, you are actually like me. You can do what I'm doing. He said, no, no, but I'm small. No, no, you can do it. Boom! Mommy, mommy, mommy. Then you just carry him, bring it back to the nest. You'll be look, from that day, you'll be looking at your mother like this. Ah! <laughs> Are you for real? And at that time, you're going hands for the child. Hands for the child. One day, just scatter it again. As, hey, mommy, mommy, mommy. you carry him again. Put him there. Then, one day, the mom will do it again. For some reason, the eaglet 
will think maybe today I should, I should do something like my mother. I'm fed up of being afraid. Then she also spread her wings. From that day, the eagle is flying. The eaglet is flying. From that day, then the eagle is saying, now we can be buddies. Now we can decide. Okay, you catch this, I catch that. You see, that's what the mother had been looking for. So that they could be friends. Not that he's always fending for him. As the eagle stared up in nest. When there are unpleasant situations, do you see God? When there are unpleasant situations in your office, do you see God? Do you, do you, realize, do you realize that, you know, and we all agree to this fact, just that we still don't like it, that the most unpleasant situations drew us closer to God. At the end of the day, he said, so the Lord alone did lead him. And there were no strange gods with him. Now, reason is, when everything goes your way, there will be strange gods with you. You won't know when you made other things gods. Everything is going your way. Your business is now your God. Yeah, everything is, everything is going away. Your business is now God. The office is God. How much money is coming in is God. Then God stares up the nest. All your employees want to stop working there. All your employees want to stop working there. One person has left, another has left, another has left, another has left. If you kiss them, nothing will happen. You know why? The eagle has stared up the nest. What was he telling you? Look at me. Because I found strange gods in you. The children of Israel, when you read the book of Judges, most of the times, things went well for them. They ejected God. God wants to bring you to that place where you have mastered The days that things were going well with you. Let me tell you this. Maybe some will agree, some might not agree, but you, I mean, you'll see what I'm talking about soon. Do you know, do you realize that during the times that things were happening very fast, 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 fast in your life, you became proud. You started thinking that other people who are not doing well are lazy. Or they, or they are not praying enough. Or, you see, the grace you have, they don't have. Fast, fast, fast. Then, for some reason, everything now starts going slow again. Humility will now enter your soul. <laughs> then you know that there's nothing that happens for man without God's hand. The Lord is master in raising us up. Sometimes when I hear some people say certain things, talk in a particular way, the only prayer I pray for them, I say, Lord, show them something small. <laughs> Such a good prayer. Lord, show them something small. And God can show you something small. If God does not do this to you, God does not love you. If he loves you, he'll push you out of the nest. Then you start crying. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Then he'll carry you, take you back. He will flutter over the young. So you see, all the while, the eagle did not know that mommy actually loves her. 
Mommy was only trying to make her strong. You have to learn it. When things don't go the way you want, still trust God. Are you listening? Yes. Still trust God. When things don't go the way you want, still trust God. You know, my confidence, my confidence is that it looks as though God is not willing to do anything except it's what he wants. So God to be selfish. The difference between my selfishness and God's selfishness is that God is good. So whatever he's selfish about is for my good. That should be your confidence. Whatever God is telling you to do, that's the right thing. Go and do it. Father, UK, 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 UK. Pastor, I came to see you today to sow a dangerous seed. Because there is a, an opportunity. An opportunity. Pastor, the school has called me. They said it's only $40,000 to start the course. Pastor, I know that by your word, you want to implicate me. <laughs> by your word, so that if it doesn't come, by the time I'm not powerful. By your word, I will get the job. Oh, I will get the school by Pastor. As if you say it, Pastor, I will just say it. Just say it. Your, your personal interest is so loud. I think one of the best prayers to pray as a Christian is that I will be done. That I will be done. I will be done. Have you ever come out of trouble and felt like this was tough? But if I get the chance, I'll go through it again. <laughs> it has never happened to you. You shall see. <laughs> yeah. We never learn anything in comfort. Every time you are in a, a, a troubling situation, remember that the eagle is still fluttering around the young. Oh, that's what he said in First Corinthians 10. He said, there's no temptation that has come to man that is beyond man. He said, but God will make a way of escape. That means no matter the situation, there's a way of escape. Another thought, second thought. So close. We'll look at the eagle's process of renewal. Right? Because we talked about the process of the eagle's growth, right? How he gets into that place has changed. He's no longer an eaglet. He has grown. He was forced to grow through challenges. Marco Rabasataya. He said, they had no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. That means whatever the eagle, eagle was doing to the eaglet, it is not beyond what he is able. <laughs> he said, but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape. Paul was going through something, he prayed. God said, all right, I'm not going to take it away. You have the grace to endure it. Do you realize that the lily is one of the most beautiful flowers? But the lily comes with thorns.
So if you want the lily, you will get some pricks. You get some thorns. Let's look at the, the change of the ego. How he renews his strength. You know that song? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we wait on you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk, cannot faint. So we wait, so we wait on you. So, now, some say this is a myth. Some say this is a myth. But there should be some truth about the eagle's renewal. The reason is, some say eagles don't grow past 40 years. But some too have said the eagle can go up to 70 years. And that in between the 40 and the 70, the eagle takes himself through some changes. The reason why I will not, uh, I would believe it is because the scripture tells us that the eagle actually renews his youth. Because I don't, I'm not sure of anybody who actually went to sit in the eagle's house waiting for 70 years. Right? Human beings are very proud. Though. How did you know? How did you know? Very proud. Okay. If you were, you were going to wait for 70 years to know the eagle, that means you should have been around 20 years to start the process. So all your life, all you were doing was waiting for one eagle. So human beings are very proud, honestly. Uh, research. Research of what? For example, those who say stars are... Uh, uh, Hundreds of billions of years. Were you there? How, how many? Who has gone through the years? Well, they said it's research, and they said you should believe it. So, <laughs> so believe it. And uh, why we don't even question them is, is, is another story for another day. We don't question them. Were, were you there? It's like those who say there's uh, other, uh, other planets. Have you gone? Those who told you they've gone. <laughs> there are a lot of counter arguments about that. The lies, the lies, the lies, the lies. One of them who said he has gone was asked to swear. He did not swear. He did not swear. They gave him Bible to swear. <laughs> he was running away. <laughs> and he has gone. The lies, the lies, the lies. So all those things are to make them look superior to you. So you, you just think, ah, these countries have gone to the moon, they've gone to Jupiter, they've gone to Mars. But right now, if, if, if anything else, as you said, and I don't find its discovery in scripture, I'm very skeptical about it because they've lied too much. Now they are changing most of the things. Anyway, let's, let's, he said, but they that wait up upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Ah, yeah. Okay, so this is what has been said about the eagle. That the eagle gets to a, a point, you know, in its life where the beak, all right, it's not as sharp as before. It becomes bent and almost facing his chest. So it's like 
all the years of work of the beak. It's showing now that the eagle is old. Then the feathers are not as strong as before to take that kind of flight. It's no longer there. So the eagle keeps gliding when he realizes that I'm out of strength. I'm out of strength. He goes to a very high mountain. A very high mountain. Begins to shed off the feathers. According to those who put a camera there, it's up. To... Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not fighting with them. I said, according to those who put the camera, I, 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 I was not there. They said it's up to about 150 days. Yes, for 150 days, the eagle is changing. The part I agree with them is because the Bible says, actually, you can renew your strength and it uses the eagle. It begins to change. Write this down. Change must be intentional and painful. During Race to Fight, I said something. And a lot of the time, I've noticed that people like the passive part of the message. You know what's the passive part of the message? I'm declaring something you are receiving. People don't really like the active part of the message. It's like from the message, this is what I'm going to do. The reason why I like the active part of the message, which is what I'm going to do is because it puts the result in my hands. And I have come to realize that when I am intentional about change, a lot happens. For example, for example, um, somewhere around, around somewhere last year, I was doing, I did seven nights of change. That's what I was doing. There were some things I wanted to change about the church and myself. You see, your, the current version of yourself looks blunt and unable to achieve certain things. For example, when the scripture says that when the iron is blunt, much effort is required. I always say that the iron was not blunt from the beginning. That means the iron has been used. For example, if, take it for example, if three years ago there were some things you could do, now you cannot do them. You are getting blunt. Your abilities and consecrations of three years ago were sharper than now. So if the Bible likens you to eagles, renew your strength. Renew your strength. I, uh... Go, and, and that's why I recommend... You know, secluding yourself, I recommend it for every Christian. If you can't do it monthly, do it quarterly. The discipline, and that's why I said must be painful, not because uh, some, some pain will be inflicted on your body. I'm just saying, because according to what the one who put the camera there said, because I was not there. Maybe I'm going to look for a video on it first. I went for what said that the eagle has to change the beak. So he begins to use the beak to hit the mountain, the, the rocks. Hit the rocks, hit the rocks until the beak comes off. That's some painful process. And while he's doing that, he's crying. But it's not someone taking out the beak. The eagle himself is taking out the beak.
What I love about secluding myself to change is, anytime I do that, a lot begins to happen. For example, I've taken some time, I'm maybe taking a week out. The good thing God has helped me with is with my sensitivity. Sometimes I can, I can feel dry. I can feel like I feel that I'm dry. It's like I, I feel that I have, I have dispensed, I have worked, I have, I have, I have counseled people, I've, I'm tired. When I, when I get to that point, I withdraw. When I withdraw, I start to fast, I start to pray, and I start to study the word. You know what starts happening? Usually on the first days of doing it, it is correction, correction, correction. The Spirit of God will begin to correct me. Hey, this was wrong. Hey, you are trusting yourself too much. Hey, you were speaking like this. Stop talking like this. Don't say this again. Don't use this example. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. In the beginning of it, I can see that I'm making the changes. I'm making the changes. I'm making the changes. Then another thing that begins to happen is also empowerment. I just realized that some things are entering my, my, my spirit. I'm, be, I'm changing. I'm becoming different. Something is happening to me. Something has happened to my character. Now, let me say this. I had a, I had a meeting with the choir yesterday. I told them, I, okay, I think I didn't tell them that. You see, especially when you are like a, a leader or a pastor, you are, in a, in, you are in a very dangerous situation. You know why? You know why? Because your charismata and your character are two different things. Your charismata, which is the gift, how graceful you are. You know, you, 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 um, some people's voice, the how sweet it sounds, that's not how sweet their character is. So that they can stand on the stage and go, oh, oh, and it so sounds so sweet and soft. When you meet them outside, it's oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you see, now this is the challenge. Your leadership. Your charisma. God is responsible for most of the things that happens. When it comes to your character, God is not responsible. That's why you can see someone who is very anointed and very, very terrible. So, like Saul, he's anointed, but he's mad. Like Balaam, he's a prophet, but he's a sorcerer. Both are coming out of the same person. So you can sing very well and be a very terrible person. Your character. So you see some very anointed men of God, but when they start talking on radio, you wonder, what, what, what's wrong with him? Yes, it's, 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 it's because we confuse the two. And some think, because the charismata is working, they think they are good people. Your character, your, the change of your person is your responsibility. To walk in love is your responsibility. I always like to take inventory of myself at the end of the year. To think, and I ask people questions like that a lot. Those who are around me, I ask myself, what did the year teach you? What did you learn this year? Because that we are changing is more important than what we are getting. What did you, what, what did you become this year? What did the, the, you know, what, what, what did the year teach you? What did the challenges of the year teach you? What did the grace of the year teach you? Uh, by, by the time you were ending the, the year, what do you think God was trying to tell you? I always look out for that. And almost every year, the reason why I'm able to remember all the things that happened to me in different years is because by the time the year was ending, I could tell something significant God was trying to teach me. Sometimes God used a whole year to teach me humility. I've told you, to be timid and naive doesn't mean you are humble. Humility must be taught by God. Must be taught by God. 
you can have a very innocent face and be very proud. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Look, can you feel when it's a season to change? Some can't. They cannot feel when it's a season to change. It's, the, the, the show goes on. See, their life is the show goes on. The show goes on. And I told many of you, I said, what you don't know is that in, in the law, you are entitled to leave. Sometimes go for leave. Sometimes go for leave, not to attend funeral, because if something had happened, they'll give it to you in the office. Sometimes go for leave, and don't waste the leave. Withdraw. Now, the year is about to end. Will you withdraw? You have to. You have to withdraw. And tell yourself, I'm about to change. Something's about to happen in my life. I'm about to change. You will go into that place. You know, I've been feeling that again for some time now. A desire to change again. A desire to change again. Because a lot happened this year. I, 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 I still feel the desire to, to, to change again. Prayer. Fasting. New knowledge. New knowledge. Sometimes I feel like adding like a, a new subject, something I've never read before, I want to start reading it. A great writer said something. He said, we'll be the same people, but for the new books that we have read. Alam, when do you realize that it's time to change? When you cannot share without repeating the old things. Once you find yourself recycling knowledge, recycling knowledge, it's time to change. Ego ways. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And when they are renewed, it he said they will mount up with wings as eagles. He said at that time they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. They will run and not be weary. Before, when they were running, because the feathers are old, the beak is old, they are weary. When they walk, they are faint. It's time to change. If you can't see that, I don't know. It's time to change. I call, I call the shots with change in my life. I call the shots with change in my life. I call the shots. Because I know, I, I, I realize that I won't change until I decide to change. Do you realize that you can even change how you look? You can change how you look. You know the most difficult part of change? It's because it involves discipline and involves routine. And that's what most of, the, most of the time people are not able to do. Change. If you've noticed that your teeth are yellow, And it's not the natural yellow. You know there's natural yellow. Do you know that your teeth and your eyes are supposed to be about the same color? One is not supposed to be too, uh, whiter than the other. Otherwise it will show. Yes. But when you realize that yours is not the natural color, Is Dr. Obed here? Is it true? Your teeth and your eyes. A 
It depends. On what? Yeah, so it's, um, it's it depends on the there are many factors, but it depends. <laughs> some some people some some people's um, teeth are naturally yellow. Yes. Is that something? There's the natural yellow. Yes. Please. But those who have <laughs> yellowized. What are some of the things they can do to change their teeth? Asking for the ones which have yellow lysed. <laughs> yes. Okay, so for that one, basically, um, the, the most important thing is cleaning. Yes, they will have cleaning. to scale and polish. And polish. So, uh, not like just brushing? No, 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 no. I mean, brushing to some extent, because brushing doesn't go into the crevices in between your teeth. So, you need that at least every, uh, at least once a year or every six months. You have to go and do proper cleaning. Yes, please. Every six months. Clean inside everywhere. How much is it? <laughs> uh, okay, at, at my facility, um, I think 300, 350. Cities? Yes. It's, a, it's yes, government, so. Uh, but for private, 600. 600. <laughs> because sometimes they're hallelujahs. <laughs> Praise God. May I feel let's pray. Were you blessed in service? Is it time to change? You're going to pray. Remember the first thing I talked about, trusting God. You're going to pray and tell the Lord, that Lord, I trust you. I trust you with my life. Keep leading me. And even when you stare the nest, thank you for flattering over me. Mora Mashida Alasto Lamande Sora Bakabahaya Mokabo Shebaroske Baradabaya Mora Basote Kebarodo Sekabaya Kora Bashida Bakabo Skabadebe Kabaya Rata Kabo Sheda Baya Bosote Kea Ko o sa ala aste ala bako bolo bolo, mola bashala babo sa kala babo la ba, shi kabala bashada ra bara baba bashada bahaya, mora bashada ra bako soro boske bahaya, raka bashada ra bashada ra baya bako sha, raman takaba so nama shana ma, it's time to change, it's time to change, it's time to change, mon take baya ya. Moto koro boshi da ba da ba da ba da ba, ra ba 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 ba, ra ba 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 ra ba 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 ra ba ba la ba sha da ra ba ska da ba sha da ra ba da ba, ra ba da ba sha da da ba ka ba sha da da ba. Hallelujah. I want you to take. I want to take a writing material. Write down the date you are deciding to go and withdraw yourself. Now listen. Camps are good, but they are not enough. Because when I finish camping with you, I go and do my own. Sometimes before, sometimes after. Camps are good. I'm not, I'm not, camps at work. There, there are also some things that only the corporate atmosphere can do. All right? But yourself, write down the dates. Write down the date. And you see, when I talked about your, your, um, the seclusion of the ego, to change. You know, there are many Christians, when you take away 
their responsibility in the house of God, they don't have their Christianity left. When you take away what they are doing, there's nothing left again. So, if they were probably doing something in church, if you ever take it from them, they will be so offended. Why? Because they don't have anything left. Those are the times that you see how bankrupt you are. I'm sure I've told you the story before that for like three years I was not doing anything in church. But trust me, those were the best, my best years of Christianity. That's when I, I had encounters with God. That's, that's what changed. That's, that's the change that happened to me. That, that's the time. When everything was taken from me, I began to see God. Because there are some people, they don't have anything left if you take out what they are doing. Your Christianity is more important. So have you written your date down? You have some days down. You want to go and cause some changes, right, in your life. Make sure you do that before the year ends, right? Lift your hands and thank him one more time. Just thank him. We've prayed. And he's answered our prayers. you father in Jesus name amen bring out your friend let's close